Okay guys, I'm going to walk through my notes just so you can see my thought process. A couple warnings with this. Keep in mind that I've read this many, many times and I've also been doing this for many, many years. So if during your first read you didn't catch all the things that I caught, that's okay. I don't expect you to catch everything, but I just want to give you my impression. Um, I definitely write everything out by hand. So this is exactly what my notes would look like for anything that I, I read and review. You can certainly use the computer and type out your notes. You can build categories if you'd rather sort them that way. I've given you a few graphic organizers. When I say being an intuitive reader and kind of going with your gut, this is what I mean. I always start with the title over here and I put a star next to where my notes start because I like webs and I kind of go circularly so this way I know exactly where I started. I read the title I Want a Wife and it reminded me of someone who might be in favor of the role of a wife but I knew that wasn't coming because I know that Judy Brady was a very strong feminist at a time when the role of a wife was not so great. So I put that there just to remind myself, is she trying to lure people in with a false title? Is she trying to be ironic? Just food for thought. Then I note here that the piece was published in Ms. Magazine. This will dictate the audience. Who reads Ms. Magazine? Well, it was a feminist magazine, so feminists would read it, but also women who were interested in feminism, who maybe didn't completely buy into it at the time, but wanted to know what it was all about. So that's who the audience would be. She starts with first person, so it's definitely in her voice. She's establishing it. She starts with that anecdote about a friend of hers, kind of pulling in that ethos or her expertise. I also thought it was interesting that she's sitting there ironing as she's thinking, because that's something that's a very domestic activity. And to me, it felt like she was relaying the message, hey, I'm one of you. I'm a housewife, too. Remember, sometimes, even in that time period, and actually especially in that time period, people thought feminists were not housewives, that they were kind of apart from the general body of women. So to me, that felt like she was really trying to relate to her audience. When she moves to the I want, I see that as repetition throughout the piece. Sometimes you can just visually scan a piece and see if something is repeated. It felt demanding to me. I want, I want, I want, but I think it was a good choice. And it continues, I want a wife. It's interesting to me that she really distances a wife at that point, not speaking of herself as a wife, but only talking about wife as other, as something kind of external. Then I noticed that the examples started as reasonable. They started as things a partner might want another partner to do, but they started to build in each paragraph to get a little more demanding. Then by the third paragraph, I thought to myself, okay, the I want a wife is getting a little annoying. It's getting a little frustrating, almost like a toddler demanding something. I want a wife, I want a wife. I think she does that intentionally, to get the audience a little frustrated. And I, that reminds me of purpose then. And I think, okay, for some reason, she wants us to be frustrated and angry with this piece as we read. I also noticed at this point that the she keeps referring to my children, my house, my social life. And it really is supposed to come from the voice of a husband because we're talking about my wife. So if my wife is other, and if the voice is supposed to be what either a husband or society thinks a wife should be, I thought it was interesting that it was never our children, our house, our social life. My firmly grounded it in the husband's perspective, meaning it all belongs to him. Then they start talking about the sex life. And I thought, whoa, this is definitely something she wouldn't want to open up with because some people, especially in that time period, might find it scandalous. But she gets there. She saves it towards the end and essentially draws a line where the husband's needs should be met, the wife's needs don't matter. And he can cheat, which did not seem okay to me in any way, shape, or form. The last bit really cemented the idea that in that society, she felt that they looked at a wife as a widget in a household, not as a person. Because the speaker says, if the wife isn't working for me, I can replace them with another wife, and they will take the children, and I'm free to start a new life, and that's what it is. Again, think about if she had started with that. Some people would have been offended. Some people would have said, this is ridiculous and walked away. To me, it really indicates that she's talking to those people who aren't quite sure how they feel about feminism yet. If she was speaking to a group that was all in on feminism, 
She might have started with something stronger because she wouldn't have to worry about kind of reeling them in. But she starts with those reasonable examples because she wants people to continue reading. And that's a really important thing to think about when you build an argument. Who's your audience? And how do you keep them at the table? First, you write well. You're engaging. You're interesting. But you also have to think about your evidence. If you're trying to approach a group that might not agree with you, you can't start with the heaviest evidence first. It might push them off. So I think it was a very methodical and very smart choice for her to start with very basic, hey, I want a wife to do the laundry and clean, and ultimately build to, if I need to go find another wife, I can do that because this situation is about me and the wife is a widget in this house. Finally, you have that lovely rhetorical question, my God, who wouldn't want a wife? And that's the microphone drop moment. That's the moment where she's really summing things up. So then we go down to the bottom here, and these are the five steps of satire analysis. First, what is the object in question? The housewife and society's view of the housewife. What's the issue? The disparity between a husband and a wife's roles. And I think it's just a very clever idea for her to speak as husband in this. What devices does she use? Repetition. Oh my gosh, I hope that kind of slapped you in the face. The repetition builds intensity. It reminds us every step of the way what she's talking about. And frankly, it annoys the reader a little bit. It makes us tense and stressed out because we should be. In her eyes, the role of the housewife in society is not okay. And so that intensity build of the evidence and the repetition, if I were writing a full, full analysis of this, would be the two things I focus on. What type of satire is it? It's social satire. She is attacking the role of the housewife in society. Finally, the purpose. She wants women, particularly those who are not sold on feminism, to reconsider what their role is in a marriage. I hope this has been helpful. Please head back and look at the review and analysis that I wrote at the end.